Okay, so I have made a little bug fix video uh, because I found a couple of bugs when I was playing around with the next part of the tutorial. So before we actually start on the next part where we will create some equipment and later on equip it to our character, um, I would like to address two bugs I found. So the first bug has something to do with the amount of slots in our inventory or um, actually the amount of empty slots in our inventory. Because if we look at our inventory here, I select that and I go to the amount of slots. I have selected 10 slots. And if I go to my chest inventory and select uh, that it should only have 5 slots, then we will run into some problems because the amount of empty slots um, doesn't fit with the amount of slots in the inventory when we do that. So let's see, we have our inventory here and there's 10 slots and I would pick up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 items. And then when I would like to pick up the next item, I'm not able to do that because I just told my chest inventory that it has 5 slots and I told my inventory that it has 10 slots. But because the variable that um, contains or the variable that handles the amount of empty slots in the inventory is uh, static, well then we're going to have a problem because when it's static it tells both of the inventories that it only has 5 empty slots in it, which means that our inventory with 10 slots also only have 5 empty slots from the get-go. If we would have executed the code in other order, we might have switched it around so that our inventory has 10 slots and this one would have 10 slots as well, even though it's only a 5 slot bag. So to address this, we actually need to do a little fix in here. We open up our um, inventory script and go to the top of the script with all the um, fields. We will see that we have this static variable here called empty slots. And the simple fix is just to change this from static to being non-static. Let's see if that gives us some errors. So we're getting two errors here, and that's because the um, property for accessing this is also static, so we just need to change that from static. So let's try to save this and build and see what else we have. Double click on that. So inside our slot script, we also have an error because before we were just accessing the inventory empty slots here from the slot script and we need to access the specific inventory that this slot is sitting on so before it was just the inventory in general because we wrote inventory dot empty slots so what we have to do is to access the inventories um, uh, sorry to access the slots inventory um, and add some empty slots to it and when we play our game let's just outcome this so we can actually play it and show you what I mean uh, here we go. So if I run this, then you'll see that we have a slot here, and it actually sits as a child object of the inventory here. So we can actually access the inventory by saying slot dot get parent, and then position zero because it's the only parent we have. And then we can access the slot inventory, and then access the uh, inventory script and get the amount of empty slots. So instead we will say game object, or actually we can just write transform.parent and we can get component uh, inventory dot empty slots plus plus. So now I just told it to access the current slots parent, which is the inventory, and then add amount uh, an empty slot to it. So if we save this and jump back into Unity and we replay our game, we should be able to pick up 10 uh, mana potions now, even though we only have uh, 5 slots in one of the bags. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10. So now we just managed to pick up all uh, these potions. So the other bug I would like to address is the fact that you can actually still put items into this um, inventory here, even though you're too far away from the chest. I'll just make the chest a little large so it's easier for me to hit it when it's invisible. So let's see, if we run our game, we have a nice and big inventory here for our chest and our normal inventory. And if I look here, you'll see that my chest is in this area. So I'm running around in my game finding monsters and I want to throw away one of my items. So I click on the item and I want to throw it away. But it didn't land on the ground here and I didn't drop it actually because I just put it into my chest here without having the chest open and without being close to the chest at all. 
we might want to disable our chests totally later on when we go away from them we'll, we'll, we might want to disable the inventory part uh, but for now we would just don't want to be able to place an object whenever something is closed so we can actually fix this uh, fairly easy and we can do that by jumping back into our script so inside our inventory script we are already checking if um, our pointer is over the game object before we drop it on the ground but the thing is that this uh, function here uh, event system is pointer over game object um, doesn't take into account if our uh, mouse is over a game object that is invisible because it doesn't know if our inventory is closed or open so we need to make our own functionality that should replace this line of code so that we can actually uh, drop an item on the ground even though the mouse is over a game object uh, because the inventory might be closed so to fix this, we need to add two functions, um, and we can do that down here in the bottom under our should have some undrag or something. Yes, we have an undrag function here, and under that we can make a public void called the uh, pointer exit, and we can make a public void called pointer uh, enter. And I'm just going to rename that one on top so it's called pointer instead of point. So inside these functions we need to set a variable um, that is indicating if our mouse is over and uh, inside or outside an inventory. So in the top here we can make a new variable called public static. Remember to make static um, boolean and we're going to call it uh, is mouse over. or just call it uh, mouse inside or something yes so I'm gonna call this mouse inside and I'm gonna set it to false as default so then we need to set this mouse inside so on our pointer exit we're gonna say mouse inside equals false and on our pointer enter we're gonna say um, mouse inside equals true uh, but I don't want to do this unless our canvas um, or unless our um, inventory is visible so I'm gonna say if canvas group dot alpha is larger than zero then we're gonna say mouse inside equals true so that pointer enter doesn't get triggered when I mouse over an inventory I have closed for example which will make this uh, functionality um, irrelevant if, if we would just uh, use mouse inside even though it's it's uh, visible so the functionality we have up there actually needs to replace this mouse inside let's go up here and this whole thing here this line of code inside update should be replaced by mouse inside so as long as our mouse is not inside an inventory that is visible actually well then we can uh, can drop it uh, on the ground so one more thing we need to do is in our move uh, function we have something called move uh, object or something move item here we go and in here we also need to make an if statement so that we don't place an item inside an inventory if move inside is true so uh, actually we're gonna say if uh, clicked dot uh, transform the parent that get component canvas group so if that um, if if that slot we are clicking is parent, which is the inventory it's sitting on, if that alpha is larger than zero, well then we would like to place the item inside, but n not if uh, if this is not true. So now we are placing the item inside the inventory. If the inventory is visible, if it's not visible, well then we're not placing the item inside the inventory. So let's save and let's jump back into Unity let's see if we can pick up some items and here and yeah okay of course I'm getting ahead of myself of course it doesn't work yet because we're not triggering those two functions that should make sure that we um, we uh, put our mouse inside the, the inventory so we need to go to our inventory and down here we need to add two events we need to add an event for pointer enter and another event for pointer exit 
and those events should just trigger our function we just made so inventory um, yeah click on the um, function uh, drop down here go to inventory and then we need to select our um, pointer enter and down here we need to select our inventory pointer exit so we can actually make some debug functionality so we can see it oh if i could spell correctly there we go so on pointer exit we can say debug.log pointer exit and on pointer enter we can say debug.log pointer enter save this and jump back into unity you'll see that uh, when a mouse over it sets pointer enter and a mouse out then it's pointer exit and it keeps doing that but if if the inventory is gone then it's not going to say pointer enter because uh, there's nothing there so now i'm still outside in inventory so i can drop my items so let's see if we play our game and pick up some stuff and we can see we still have our inventory here if I would go away to close that one, then I would drop my item on the ground instead of inside the other inventory, even though um, I'm trying to click on top of it. And if I open up the inventory, I should be able to place stuff in it. There we go. Um, as you can see, there was one little bug here. When I click here, it drops it on the ground. And that's, of course, because I need to do the exact same thing with the chest inventory right now I only did it with the normal inventory so I actually need to take these um, events here and add them over here as well add event um, select here inventory and okay I'm getting ahead of the add event and pointer enter and add event and pointer exit and then I need to select inventory and I need to select um, mouse enter or pointer enter it's called and click here and inventory and pointer exit so if we do it now everything should work fine should be able to pick up stuff and open this chest and put stuff in it and pick these up without any problems and switch them around yes there you go so that was it for this little bug fix video. Um, in the next part of this tutorial, we'll start generating some items that we can equip on our character later on. So thanks for watching.